What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of the Tech once again, and as requested, we will be going over Uniswap and decentralized finance. Specifically, in this video, we're just going to be doing a how to on Uniswap, specifically on how to add liquidity. I am by no means a financial advisor, nor am I that well versed quite yet in Uniswap, but I know the basics enough to get you started. So, without further ado, let's get into it. First things first, we're at our browser now and we are going to open Chrome or in our operating system. And in Chrome, we're going to need a wallet. The easiest wallet to use with Uniswap is MetaMask. We've talked about this plenty of times before. Link will be in the description, metamask.io. Next, you're going to want to go ahead and click the download now button, which will take you to the little page to download in Chrome and click the install MetaMask for Chrome. And then you can click add to Chrome. Additionally, you can search for it directly in the Chrome web store. You're going to click add to Chrome and add extension. The extension will install and you'll be presented with the get started screen. You're going to click get started. And then today we are going to be creating a new wallet for this example. They will give you some ideas on how to basically, if you want to help improve MetaMask at this point, you can say no thanks or I agree. It shouldn't matter. The next step that you have to do is going to be creating a password. I recommend using a random password generator. LastPass is a great option, Dashlane, Kaspersky has one built in if you're already paying for their antivirus. Or if you really just need to, you can go to random.org, scroll down to the password generator, and click Get Passwords. From here, you're just going to copy this and paste it on over into the wallet, but we're going to be using a simple password because this is for an example. Once you have created your strong password, you're going to click the I have read the and agree to the terms of service and click create. This is where you will get your secret words. This is very important. A, you don't want anybody else to have access to it because then they can have access to your wallet. And B, you don't want to lose it because if you lose it, you won't be able to recover your wallet. I recommend a few different ways of handling this. One is to write down on a piece of paper all of these words in order. That's going to be the most safe way. Put it in a fireproof safe and keep it there. Alternatively, you can go ahead and click reveal, do a control C and place it in a notepad, keeping in mind that anybody that gets access to your computer will now have access, of course, to your secret key. Not that great. So you're really going to want to go ahead and save it to a encrypted USB drive. Now you can do this. You can encrypt it with the built-in Windows 10 BitLocker right here. So you should have like a removable drive and then you can come down here and turn on BitLocker and encrypt it. It's a very basic way of doing it and it will at least be more safe than obviously saving it on an unencrypted drive. Finally, the last option is using Nord Locker. Nord Locker is an encryption, cloud encryption essentially, uh, to basically make it simple and it's free. So what I would recommend is saving it and then placing it in your Nord Locker and going from there. Links to Nord Locker will also be in the description below and they're a great VPN service as well. But as always, it's going to be safest to write it down and put it in a fireproof safe. I'm going to do file save as I'm just going to save it as Uniswap and then we are going to have it up here and ready to click next. Now, once you've written it down, it wants you to confirm your secret backup phase just to make sure you didn't forget to write it down. You are going to click the words that correspond to the key in order. So the first example would be bachelor, gasp, tourist, tiger, laundry, ancient, vague, slight, raw, spread, ooh, nasty, 
left side. You got a raw spread on your left side there, bro. All right, so from there, you're gonna go ahead and click confirm and then all done. At this point, it will go over some swapping. Feel free to read this. You can now swap directly within the MetaMask wallet, but we're just gonna be going over how to swap and add liquidity in Uniswap itself. So we're just gonna go ahead and close out of that. The next thing you're gonna need to do is get some ETH into your wallet. You can click the buy and go through some of their suggestions. I recommend directly depositing. You have a few different options. You can buy through Coinbase. You can buy through Crypto.com. Links to those will be in the description below. They're both exchanges. And if you're in the US, you can only buy through the Crypto.com application on your phone or like the iOS app or the Android app. The current exchange on the web app is not available in the US, but it is available in other countries. So it just depends on your loc location for what your buying options are going to be. Alternatively, you can mine to the wallet. And if you're curious in how to mine, of course, check out my video that will be linked at the top corner there. Now my strategy personally, and this is not financial advice, is to mine Ethereum and then take that Ethereum and add it to liquidity. And this is because liquidity can essentially add an additional investment so or additional revenue. So not only are you making the revenue off the hardware that you bought to mine Ethereum, but then you're also making some money by essentially staking it. Now it's not actually staking um, what it is, is essentially facilitating faster swaps between tokens by locking up 50% of the value in one token and 50% of the value in another token. For example, you would have ETH or WETH for the token portion and Bitcoin, which would be WBTC for the token portion. There are of course a ton of different tokens and we can kind of go over that as well. What I need to do now though, is send some money over here for the example, which I will do. And then we will uh, get to the next portion of the how to once that deposit is confirmed. So to do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and click account details, and then I'm going to scan it from another wallet and send the crypto over. Okay, so I've initiated the deposit, and while we wait on the deposit, let's talk about some of your options for tokens. We're gonna go ahead and head on over to uniswap.org, and then from here, we can go ahead and click the launch app button in the top right, and that's gonna launch the app for us to go ahead and connect our wallet. So we're gonna go ahead and connect the wallet we're going to select MetaMask and then MetaMask will pop up and you will click next and connect. Once it's connected, it will basically have the option to go ahead and start swapping, which is fantastic. Now we need to decide on what coin we want to go ahead and pair with it or token. For this, there's a couple different options. There's one called Uniswap ROI. And if we head on over to Uniswap ROI, we can go ahead and get started. You can create an account. Let's just do Uniswap Toot. We're gonna sign up. Never save your passwords with the built-in Chrome. It's a terrible idea. Don't do it, especially in crypto. We can go over that in another video. Let me know if you're interested in why, and we can make a whole video about it. That's a separate topic. Next, we're gonna go ahead and click the Pools tab. And here you're gonna have a couple things. You have Uniswap, Curve, Balancer, so they're starting to add more. We can do Curve and Balancer tutorials later, but today we're gonna to be focusing on Uniswap. And then down here you have your liquidity pool, current liquidity in ETH, expected fees, expected impact loss over the next 30 days, and the ROI percentage. So this is a 30-day return on investment, 1.25% for ETH, to Bitcoin, almost 2% for ETH to Tether, so on and so forth, with the equivalent APR being the last step here. So what you're really taking a look at here is your potential earnings over the next 30 days as well as over the next year 
and then making a decision from there. Personally, today we're gonna to be doing an example with Tether. And the reason we're gonna be using Tether is because Tether is known as a stable coin. A stable coin is a coin that is tied to a fiat currency. In the case of Tether, that is going to be the US dollar. And that means that every Tether is backed by the US dollar. There's a couple reasons why this is important, but primarily it is because people swap to a stable coin instead of pulling out fully because they want to essentially be able to get back in on the dip. This means that the most trading potential and the most fees that will be earned are typically going to be with stable coins. That being said, it won't be the highest ROI and there are plenty of options for higher ROI if you are interested in that. One that I really like is Leak LIQ. Oh, it's not even in here. And that one is something like 20% a month, but it's a very risky token, right? If you're interested in leak, I'll have links down in the description. It's also known as liquid, and it essentially is built in a way that encourages people to keep their leak uh, locked up in liquidity. Whenever you add liquidity to leak, it takes 5% and adds it to the total pool no matter what, meaning to get that 5% back, you need to keep your leak in longer, which means it's more stable as far as like not having people pull out and, and all the time, right? But for today, we're gonna to be going over Tether. Let's go ahead and check our Ethereum wallet and see if we have any ETH in it yet. Nope, so we're gonna wait for this to go through. Alrighty, so we're just gonna wait for that to go through and then we'll be back with the rest of the tutorial. So now we want to go ahead and move into swapping to, of course, Tether. So we're gonna go back to the Uniswap interface. And once again, if you haven't connected your wallet, click, click connect wallet and MetaMask will pop up and say, okay, and you'll connect it. You can see here that Uniswap is now showing the amount of ETH we have in our wallet. We don't want to do max, so this is a little difficult. First of all, this is ever changing, and so a calculator for the amount of ETH versus the amount of the token is always gonna be kind of stressful and always changing. There's also going to be fees. So in a lot of cases, you're gonna to have to play with this, and you always wanna put in less than you actually have in your account. When you're swapping, what you're trying to do is get as close to 50% in ETH and 50% in the token that you want to basically add to liquidity. So the token we are gonna go with is going to be Tether, which is USDT. So we're gonna click that, and then we are going to adjust the amount of ETH to about 50% of this to be safe so everything goes through, and because I know fees are high, we're just going to do like 0.15 ETH, right? Which will give us 11 USDT. And then there are some additional options when swapping. So this is where things can get pretty complicated. If you click the settings button up in the top, you have slippage tolerance. Slip is, slippage tolerance means your transaction will revert if the price changes unfavorably by more than this percentage. Now, when dealing with ETH in stable coins or ETH in Bitcoin or one of the more kind of larger token options, this isn't gonna be as big of a deal. But once you get into trying to do it on smaller tokens that are changing prices pretty heftily, maybe swinging, you know, in upwards of 100%, this can be quite frustrating. So you have a transaction deadline as well. It will cancel the transaction if it goes over 20 minutes in this case. And there is expert mode. We're not gonna cover expert mode in this video. We can cover that in another video if you guys are interested. Um, but at this point, I don't think that it's something for a tutorial video or a, a basic tutorial video. Now we can adjust the slippage tolerance to as little as possible, but then you can see that it'll say your transaction may fail. So between Tether and Ethereum, we are gonna be looking at more of the 0.5% slippage tolerance. This means that you could lose up to 0.5% uh, during the swap, so keep that in mind. So now we're gonna go ahead and just click the swap button and confirm swap. MetaMask will pop up 
to confirm the transaction and we are going to click confirm and the transaction is submitted. At this point, we will need to wait until the pending is complete and then we'll move on to adding liquidity. Okay, so now that we've made the swap and we have a little bit of Tether and a little bit of Ethereum, we are going to want to head on over to the pool tab. On the pool tab, you will have the option to see your current liquidity and monitor it. And then additionally, you'll have the option to create a pair for liquidity. A pair is going to be 50% of one token and 50% of another token locked up so people can reliably trade between the two. Clicking create pair, you're going to then select your token. In this case, we're gonna select USDT. And then you will be able to click supply. However, the problem right now is that we are running into fees. If you guys notice that it's essentially we spent all of our money on just transferring from ETH, of course, to USDT or a lot of it. Now to then add liquidity, we will have to pay yet another fee. So if we click supply here, you will notice that we have the amount of ETH deposited, the amount of USDT that would be deposited, and then of course the rates, right? So one USDT equals that much ETH, one ETH equals 776 USDT, $776, and so on and so forth. Now, I have to actually go in before we swap and send some additional ETH so that we can pay the fee because our fees or the amount of ETH in our wallet compared to the amount of ETH that we want to stake is going to put us into an insufficient balance. But that can happen a lot. So you need to pay attention to it when you're swapping between and clearly like doing an example like this with just $50 is not quite enough. But we're gonna go ahead and click supply and then confirm supply. And then you'll see that the MetaMask will pop open and show the gas fee and the total. So 0.018 and then the gas fee is 0.017. Now, if you take a look at our MetaMask account, we only have like 0.14, so we have to send a little bit more over before we can add this liquidity. I've initiated the transaction and we will go from there. At this point, we're just gonna go ahead and reject and then we'll go over it once we have the money in the wallet. Okie doke, so now that we have the money in the wallet, we know that it's gonna be around 0.2 ETH for us to go ahead and add liquidity. So we are going to go ahead and just do 0.009. That'll make it seven USDT and 0.009 Ethereum. We're gonna click supply. Once again, we covered over all of these metrics here. So now we're just gonna click confirm supply and then we can edit the gas fee. So you see here amount plus gas fee is 0.28 on the ETH. If we click edit, we can go to slow, which is what I recommend because that's gonna be the cheapest. However, for this tutorial, we'll just do average for now uh, so that it goes through a little bit quicker and then we're gonna click confirm. Transaction is submitted and now we'll have to wait for the pending to complete and then we will review from there. Alrighty, so now that it's completed, it says add this amount of ETH and this amount of USDT and it'll show our position down here. If we go back to pool, we can now click the account analytics and a uh, cured fees. So as you can see here, we have essentially $14.90 in liquidity split, of course, between ETH and Tether. At this point, it'll start earning 0.3% of all transaction fees. And then when you accumulate fees, it will show it right here. To remove the fees, you'll click the remove button and then select the amount that you want to remove and click approve. And then additionally, you can click the add button. And if you have any additional Tether or any additional ETH, you can add to that pool with the Tether and the ETH. The goal of Uniswap is to earn back all the fees that you spent in fees before pulling out. So in this particular case, we had 
fees for swapping, of course, to Tether, which was about 30% of what we put in, about $15, somewhere around there. Then we have the fees to actually add the liquidity, which was about 15 US dollars. So the total fees to add liquidity in this example was $30, meaning that we would preferably want to see our fees earned to be at least $30 before we pull out. Other things that go ahead and affect this is going to be the value of the tokens that you currently have in Uniswap, and that will be important to keep in mind because as ETH goes up, your total value will go up. And then you also need to keep in mind that you have another fee when you pull out. So if you come in here and click approve to remove, then of course you're gonna have to pay a fee when you pull that out convert it back to ETH and so on and so forth. So you almost want to really double it, right? So in this case, for example, we would want fees earned to be around $60 before pulling out. Alrighty, so as I stated before, I am by no means a financial advisor, nor am I an expert at even Uniswap. Uh, we ran into a couple problems with fees here. Fees were a little higher than last time that I did it, so we had to send a little extra in to go ahead and complete the transaction. We couldn't even get one tether into liquidity without adding more. But that's the basic concept. Unfortunately, there's not a good calculator to go ahead and perfectly add 50-50 of each token and account for fees. So you're gonna have to play with it. I understand this can be difficult and frustrating. If you run into any specific issues, let me know, of course, over in the Discord. Finally, uh, if you are going to do this, you want to have a significant amount of the, the tokens uh, that you want to add to liquidity because the fees are going to be super hefty. So preferably you want to save up for a little bit, whether that's from mining or from adding, you know, just buying ETH before you go ahead and add liquidity because the more you add, the portion of it that is fees will be less and the portion of it that is fees accrued, right, will be more. So you'll have a better chance there. Anyways, that's a basic tutorial for adding liquidity to, of course, uh, Uniswap. And I hope it was helpful. If it was, leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below. And I'll see you next Tuesday.